We did for Ife, where we meet with Professor Banji Akitoye, one of the voices with a clamor for Yoruba Odudua Nation. We did meet with him to know why. Why this group they clamor for Odudua Nation? Welcome, Professor. So much is happening in the country right now, but let's start with the latest um, developments of the agitation or the call for Odudua Nation. What is Afeni Ferry's position on this? The Afeni Ferry position uh, has been for a long, long time that we Yoruba cannot continue to live under this constitution as it is because it over-centralizes power in the hands of uh, the people who live in Abuja. And it leaves the states as essentially impotent entities depending upon uh, the will and caprices and charity of the federal government. And that we cannot, in a country of many nationalities, uh, that is wrong, very wrong. It will lead to disaster. It will lead to conflict and disaster. And that therefore, uh, Nigeria should be restructured in order to make it a proper federation, the kind of federation that our fathers designed in the 1950s. That has always been the, uh, that has been the position of uh, Afeni Ferry. But now, I'm not speaking for Afeni Ferry, uh, but I can say now that uh, many of my brothers and elders and so on in Afeni Ferry have now come to the conclusion also that, some, that people like me came to a little earlier uh, that now this thing is not going to work. So you there, it's it's going not to going to work, not only because power is centralized, but because the people who have uh, control of the over-centralized power seem to have decided to unleash their people on the rest of us so as to subdue us or destroy us and so on. So it is no longer politics. They have turned it into war. And uh, after fighting this war and liberating ourselves, uh, most Yoruba people now uh, say that it doesn't make sense to want to continue to live in the same country with these people anymore. And that therefore, we need to have a separate country of our own. They will be in a separate country of their own. We hope to get this thing done peacefully in a, in a friendly manner so that uh, we will be neighbor, uh, friendly neighbors to one, to, 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 to one another uh, forever so that our children will not be fighting the way the Jews and the Arabs are fighting now, that they will be friends, they can help one another, and so on and so on, but they will be separate countries. Yeah. And we are not the only people who want that. You know, of course, that the people have wanted the earlier. We, Yoruba, in fact, we are late commons to this demand for a separate country. Uh, the people have wanted their own separate country for decades. Uh, the Peoples of the South South have wanted their own separate country for decades. It's only in the past one year that a major movement has arisen among us Yoruba people demanding clear separation from Nigeria. The sovereignty, we, we call it the, self the right of self-determination for the Yoruba people. So you say this, you hope the separation um, we go in a peaceful manner. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, we Yoruba have been uh, pursuing it in a way that uh, we hope we end up in a peaceful separation. We, our, you know, young people in all over the world, uh, when they come to a decision like this, because this is uh, a decision of almost all young Yoruba people. And if you don't bring your, uh, the influence in to say, no, 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 please, we don't want to to make this a rough and tumble and bloody affair. Uh, if you don't do that, young people tend to want to flex their muscles and their uh, vocal cords and make a lot of noise and, uh, and so on and say rude things about other people uh, and so on. No, we have been successful in getting our young people to know this is not like that. 
we are Yoruba, uh, you know, and uh, we are a civilization building people, a civilization loving people, and uh, we can achieve this in our way, in the civilized manner. And that's what we, why, we, why we have been saying we can achieve this peacefully. And we are moving forward little by little. So what do you make of um, Ondo State's Governor Uluwari Timi Akiri Dolu's um, reaction to the call for Odudua uh, Nation, saying people agitating for this Odudua Nation should not come into Ondo State? What do you make of his reaction to this? Yeah, we are a mature nation. We are a mature people. We know, we, we know that it, the, it's unreasonable to ignore the realities of the position that some people find, some of our own people find themselves. Uh, the governor is operating under this constitution. The, uh, his uh, political livelihood depends entirely on the federal government in Abuja. Uh, his being able to rule his state at all depends upon the favor of the federal government in Abuja. Uh, and therefore we do not bring pressure on our governors to come uh, overtly, openly, in support of what we are doing. We leave them to do the job they are doing, we respect them in their job, we love them, and, and so on. Uh, we recognize what is happening. But we see below the surface, we see deeper, we see, we see very deep below the surface, and we know the truth. Yeah. So whatever any of our governors may say, uh, we don't let that rattle us. We don't let it bother us much. By the grace of God, uh, Governor Kere Dolu is one of our most beloved governors in the Southwest. Uh, we cannot forget, for instance, that he was very inf inf uh, instrumental to our creating our techno for the defense of our homeland against the Fulani marauders. And uh, that uh, Amatekun has uh, developed a better uh, than probably most other states in, in the Southwest. Uh, he is also the, the person, the governor, who did the notable thing of saying in the Southwest, uh, schools and so on, we use the Yoruba, what we call it, or do a uh, national anthem today. Uh, we can't forget all of that. Uh, so whatever he has said in the past 24 hours, uh, is a, we know it must be a product of something happening in the political realm. Uh, we don't want to ask questions. The important thing is that this is a man we know, we love, we admire, and uh, that's all. Uh, he who is saying that today, maybe he will be able to get to the position that he will say something different tomorrow. Yeah. So let's assume that um, this group um, calling for the Odudua nation, has there be, been a, a, a table plan, like a plan, or is just at the stage of, okay, let's say this, let's talk out there. Is there a plan of this is the procession, this is how we're going to take this, uh, uh, secession plan, if that's what it is. Yes, you, you probably are aware of what we call the Constitutional Force Major, which we uh, proclaimed on the 16th of December last year. Uh, the idea is a legal, a legal process of drawing the federal government to start the processes of negotiation. Uh, and we didn't even say in the, that, that we were leaving. We just said we need to negotiate. What do we need to negotiate first? We are different peoples. Each people has a right to self-determination. That is not negotiable. That is not, uh, it doesn't even need to be said. Because that's the law of the world. You know? No matter how, it's, how small a nationality may be, and a nationality is a people with their own culture, their own language, their own homeland. Yeah. And their own history. That's a nationality. They have the right to self-determination. They have the right to say, to determine their status in the world. Are we going to continue to be in this country where we find ourselves? Yes or no, as they choose. 
are we going to get out of this country and create a little country of our own? Yeah. Oh no, that's the rule in the world today. And uh, yes, it it's not often easy for the country in which these people find themselves to, to say, okay, go. Uh, usually they will resist, uh, but whether you resist or not, if the people want to go, they will go. Uh, and so uh, we Yoruba want to go, and we know we will go. There is no question about that. Uh, uh, but we want to do it in a civilized manner. We are civilized people. And uh, especially we are thinking of the future. We are going, we want to, we don't just want to have a country, a Yoruba country, no. We want to have a Yoruba country that can fulfill the aspirations of the Yoruba people. We are a people who are thirsty, hungry for civilization, for development. We have uh, uh, scored a number of firsts on the African continent, in establishing free education, establishing uh, 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 centers for the training of, uh, of people in, in, uh, in various areas of, uh, of endeavor, in agriculture, in, and so on and so forth. We are a people, one, America, uh, one uh, 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 London University professor said, the Yorubas, among all the peoples in the world, are uniquely fixated on, on development and modernization. That's who we are. We are going to build a country that will be the envy of the world. We can do it. We have the capability to do it. Uh, uh, so we don't want to be bothered for the rest of time. We don't want our young, our children to be bothered for the rest of time by conflict with their neighbors and so on. No. So we want to do it in a decent and gentle manner now, that we can part in a friendly manner and our children, we have the country of, their, of, of our children, the Yoruba land of, of our future. We have friendly neighbors. Neighbors that we can help. Well, neighbors that can help us in certain areas too. And so that's it. That is our, our objective. We, that's why we say, mm -mm. no, 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 hostile can tanker us noise, no. No, uh, we don't uh, disobey the law of the land. We don't uh, uh, encourage our use of going to conflict with the police and so on. Uh, we don't, uh, uh, we tell them the police are not our enemies. These are young people, these are people employed to do a job. And they, they do their job. That doesn't make them our enemies, so don't treat them as enemies. And so on. That's the type of lesson that we are teaching our children in this movement. So at the center of this, um, talking about people in this movement, at the center of it is um, Sunday Boho, and uh, people have likened him to the high POB leader, Namde Kanu. Are there comparisons between uh, these two individuals? No, no. He's not, he's not uh, like a Namde Kanu. Uh, he's a member of a movement that is leading itself towards self-determination in its own way, in its own calm, steady, respectful, law-abiding manner. And uh, no, no, he's not. He's not, uh, he's not uh, for instance, making a noise, calling on Yoruba boys to go and fight. Mm -mm. There is a point at which we, Yoruba, have a difficulty. The point is that while we are calmly, legally fighting for our self-determination in a law-abiding manner, we have this overarching danger of full and marauders in our land, filling our bush, killing our farmers, uh, 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 driving our farmers off the farm completely and uh, raping our women, uh, kidnapping people, and generally creating disruption. Well, we have to defend our land. We wish we have to. If that factor were not there, we would, we would fight this struggle for self-determination in a calm and noiseless way and achieve it. 
But we have to defend our land. So when you talk about so our today, young people like Sunday Goho. Yeah. Sunday Goho when he talks about the about his the area of Yoruba land in which his parents were born and raised and so on. He talks with touching, touching passion. It touches you to listen to him. He says, listen, Baba, in okay, okay, Ogu. It's an open country, beautiful country. The towns and so on, uh, you know, are all connected by ancient paths and so on and so forth. Uh, it's peaceful. In the uh, dry season, when it is hot, when there is hot weather, you see families sleeping in front of their house. Nobody bothers anybody. There's really almost no crime going on there. He said, people will be on the farm and decide that at 1 a.m. in the morning that I'm going home, you, know, you will walk alone without any danger, without any fear, and come home. And women will wake up at 5 a.m. and go and harvest some things on the farm, and nobody is bothering them. He said, that's the type of place I was born in. That's the type of place my father grew up in. Now this Fulani have destroyed that peace. You cannot now venture to go to your family alone because you'll be kidnapped, you'll be raped, you'll be whatever. And he cannot stand it. And uh, thank God for a, for, a, for, a, for a patriotic, loyal person like that, who's so loyal to his people. Uh, yeah, you know. It must not be considered as some sort of desperado. He is not. He is a young man who cannot stand the brutalization of his own people. And thank God that he came. Because since his coming, uh, very many young Yoruba boys and girls have arisen to do for their people what he has done for his people in Okoyo. It's all over the place. It's not just Sunday Goho alone. It's all over the place, young people. But they are not fighting because they want to fight. They are fighting because they are compelled to fight. That's all. So do you support his um, um, response saying that um, Fulani people or headsmen should leave Yoruba land? Do yes, you? I am. It is the only sensible thing. If they, listen, if the Fulani had come peacefully, no matter how many they are, and just settle make arrangements with the families who own land and acquire land and uh, go to the other like other people do. They go swarming to Yoruba land. And nobody is saying they go to go. Why? Why? It is not part of the culture of the Yoruba to reject foreigners. It is a well-established aspect of Yoruba culture to accept foreigners to be hospitable to them and to treat them well and help them. So if they had come not killing anybody, not troubling anybody, not, spoil, not destroying anybody's farm, they just come and they are settling down, and not, most Yoruba people will not notice. But they have come to say that they will conquer, they will destroy, they will kill and maim and destroy, and the Yoruba people must defend their land. That's all. It is not something we love to do. For it, when it started five, six years ago, most Yoruba people didn't know how to, how to respond. We didn't know how to respond. We used to hold meetings at uh, uh, Perry Caucus every month and, and hear report upon report upon report of people being killed, being, 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 uh, being uh, 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 kidnapped, and uh, so on. Uh, uh, it wasn't clear what style. It was new. It's a, it's a totally new experience for the Yoruba people. And for a start, they didn't know how to tackle it. Then finally, we persuaded our governments, listen, we are, we are Yoruba. We cannot just be, be telling our young people, just go to the bush and kill them and uh, drive them away. No, we can't do that. We have spent a lot of, uh, we have spent our entire resource our entire uh, the treasure in life on educating these young people. We want to get them now to go and step into the bush and, and fight with marauders? No. So we came to the conclusion we must create something orderly for this purpose. 
That's where the idea of Amateko came. Let us have young men, a number of young men and women, train them properly, give them rules of engagement, uh, and let them be properly led and properly officered, and let them take this matter up and do it. And our governors graciously accepted and they put it together. But unfortunately, the federal government doesn't want us to defend ourselves at all. So the federal government began to put obstacles in the way. They started by saying it was illegal. Started to say that the, the governors don't have the right to, to set up such things. Uh, the Amatekon cannot bear arms, and so on. The marauders, the full and marauders, are bearing some of the most sophisticated assault weapons known to man. And nobody is stopping them. And now a, 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 a people organize to train some young men and women, properly give them rules of engagement, and send them in an orderly manner to, to, uh, to protect their land. And the federal government of Nigeria is saying, no, you cannot do it. Uh, that is a serious matter. So the president has responded to the farmer Heather's um, security issue, saying that anyone with AK-47 should be shot at. Do you think this is enough? Well, I don't think he means it. I don't think he means it. No, at least that's the point we have reached now, that it is extremely difficult for us to trust the president or the federal government. It is not true. Nobody is stopping the Fulanese from carrying their sophisticated weapon. Nobody. There is no policeman or soldier anywhere who is stopping them. They are still as free as ever. So what do you make of um, President Muhammadu Buhari's response, apart from the, if you have AK-47 with you, you'll be shot at sight. What do you make of his response to insecurity issues in Nigeria, in the country, and even in the Southwest. I didn't get that. What do I make? What do of? you make of yeah, President Buhari's um, reaction to the insecurity issues, the farmer ethers issues that is ravaging the Southwest, so to say? I don't. Well, uh, we can only assess what we see, and what we see is that the federal government would rather defend the Fulani than defend the people whose land is being ravaged. Yeah, that's, that's our perception. Perception. Yeah. So you've actually been so critical about the president even in the past um, years. What, what is that thing you think it's not probably doing right? Listen, or, yeah. listen. He's a Fulani man ruling Nigeria. The president of Nigeria should be the father of the nation. Hmm? And his people are breaking out all everywhere, killing people, destroying farms, causing mayhem, uh, kidnapping people. They are committing crime under the laws of Nigeria. The duty of the president is to make sure that the law moves in to stop them. Moreover, he has the 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 the, the the moral authority as their kinsman to say, you can't do this in the country that I'm president of. You are my people and you cannot do this to the country. Listen, if I, Banji Akinto Yewa, president of Nigeria and Yoruba boys are breaking out everywhere, killing people in the north, killing people in the east and so on, what I will I will roll in with all the natural authority that God has given me as their king's man, as their big father, their brother, and tell them, you know, you cannot do that. Buari has never done that. No. One of, of his, uh, of his uh, ministers or advisors told the people, give up your land to these people. Give your land to them, otherwise they will kill you and bury you in it, and uh, it, they will take the land anyway. So the answer is give your land to them. What type of counsel is that from a government of a, of a country? 
after they had killed a lot of people in Benue State, when the president invited the governor of Benue State and told them, and told him, uh, go and find a way to live at peace with your people. While the people of Benue breaking the law, they were just in their farms. When these people came and killed and killed and killed, so who is to live at peace? The people of Benue State or the people who are breaking the law in a massive manner? Whose duty was it at that point? Why didn't President Buhari call his people at that point and say, you cannot continue to, to do this? And if you try to continue, I will use the law against you. Why didn't he do that? But he actually um, put out a statement after um, um, Governor Samuel Autumn was um, attacked on, on Saturday. He put out a condemning the attack on, on the governor. Yeah, we know, we know the meaning of all of that. I don't want to comment on that. But we have passed the point of believing empty statements. Yeah, the president knows what to do. He's the president. He's the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. He's ultimately the commander of the, of the police and the secret service. He's not using any of that. Now when uh, Yoruba boys go and uh, 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 seize uh, uh, a Fulani gang or person uh, marauding their father's la farms and they bring them to the police, the police arrest the boys who bring them. The police arrest the boys who bring these people to justice. What kind of country is that? And how can any sensible person ask any self-respecting nation to want to remain in that type of country? No. That's all. Has there been threats to maybe some of the members or some of the groups agitating for this Odudua nation? Has there been threats in any way, arrests or anything of any sort? Yeah, they have arrested one or two boys and we have managed to get them released because there's no, there's no crime. They are not committing crime. When they go around, they're young people, you know, putting a little, uh, your hand on the wall, we, we want our own country, Yoruba, Odua nation, yeah, Yoruba land, uh, and so on. Police arrested one of them. And uh, the, the lawyers moved in. And uh, what is the basis of the arrest? What he is saying is what he desires for his people. He has a right to desire it. He is not breaking any law. He is not attacking anybody. He is not throwing stones at anybody. He is a young, agile young man, but he is not fighting. He is just going around putting uh, 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 this scrawled notes on the wall around, how does that break the law? It doesn't break the law. So uh, that's the situation. These kids who are going around saying we want our own country, we are holding meetings, organizing ourselves, uh, and so on, and uh, we will get our country, you will do a republic. They are not breaking any law. The laws of the world, the, of the international community, allows that. And Nigeria is a signatory to those laws. Therefore, those laws are part of Nigeria's laws also. And therefore, then nobody can arrest anybody for, demand, for saying, I want my people to get out of Nigeria and have a country of their own. That's not a, that's not a crime. So you, you from, from your statement, you say President Buhari has not really done right by Nigerians based on um, security issues. Are there any other um, sectors you think he has actually, maybe, since his inception into government, that he has done right by Nigerians? Uh, I'm a historian, and I follow things carefully. Uh, I am not interested in the general assessment of President Buhari's presidency. Uh, 
but there are disturbing development, disturbing trends in the economy, uh, where we just described the, the terrible developments in the security of the land. Uh, the world is shouting about the growth of poverty in Nigeria. Uh, this last year or the year before, an organization that monitors poverty trends in the world came to the conclusion that Nigeria is the home of extreme poverty in the world, the land where extreme poverty is most prevalent in the world. Another organization said, if Nigeria continues to go as it is going now, more than 50% of all the poorest people in the world by 2030 will be Nigerians. More than 50% of all the poorest, the desperately poor people in the world will be Nigerians. And uh, corruption continues to grow. It become a, uh, it become the order of mm, of the Nigerian nationality and psych. You know. Uh, Maybe when I'm done with all this noise, um, hopefully, and the Yoruba nation exi exi uh, uh, removes itself peacefully from Nigeria, I'll be able to sit down and write the history of these times. Yeah, but you know, what I've just said is just a selection from the obvious, the obvious facts. Yeah. So what do you say to people who think um, the people behind this call for Oduduwa Nation, they are just trying to be selfish, they are calling for their own interest? What do you say to those? I don't people? know what they mean by selfish. For, for one thing, they want to protect themselves. They don't want to die. They don't want their parents to die. They don't want their sisters raped in the bush. They don't want their, their fathers and mothers killed. Uh, Khrushchev once said, every living thing wants to live. Every living thing wants to live. We are living things and we want to live. And so what, what's selfish in that? What's in selfish in your desiring to live? To be at peace? What, where is selfishness in that? All right, thank you very much for your time, Professor Akintoye. Thank you.